So, you clicked on this video because I'm going to teach you about how to get all the nutrients you need and how to get them really kind of no GMO, organic, natural, produced, ethically produced, all that kind of way. So it's good for you, good for the people making it, good for the environment and you are very balanced because you're getting everything. So welcome back to part two. In part one we covered protein, fats, B12, iron, calcium and vitamin D and in this video we're going to cover iodine, carbohydrates, fibre, zinc, vitamin A and vitamin C. If you scroll down to the description box you will find the link to part one but without further ado let me roll the clip of part two. Next is iodine. I didn't realise how important iodine is was, was until very very recently. It's good, it's good. Let me let me read this for you. So what is iodine for? I'm gonna read this word for word and I'm taking this information from Liz Cook Charts. That's where this information is from. So, word for word from Liz Cook Charts. Iodine is needed for a healthy thyroid gland which controls our metabolism and the temperature of our body. The rate of, well, metabolism is the rate, the rate of bodily activity. It is also needed for energy for the hair, skin, nails and teeth. And I'm trying to get my hair really healthy because I've just bleached it. Well, I've dyed it back brown now, but I've, I've been bleaching it for the past year. So I was like, oh my God, what can I take for my hair? And iodine is like such a big one um, for like the beauty, health stuff. Um, well, obviously for your thyroid as well. Your thyroid is so underrated, especially when you get older. You kind of realise how important your thyroid is because it tends to stop working as much. Um, and that's why a lot of old people overheat or get too cold um, and gain a lot of weight because the thyroid is so important for just maintaining our body and the thyroid is right here. So make sure that's not happening too much. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. Shall I keep that in? That's so bad. Okay, how much? Sorry I'm reading all of this, but this is so specific that I can't remember it. I physically can't remember it. So how much should we take? The recommended amounts are 70 micrograms a day for a one-year-old to a three-year-old, 100 micrograms a day for a four-year-old to a 10-year-old, 140 micrograms per day for an average adult. So we don't need that much iodine, but it is important and you can take it as a supplement to help with things like hair, skin, nails and teeth. Now, what happens if you don't get enough iodine? Well, this is a possibility, it says. Oh no, maybe I don't have enough iodine. Okay. So you have cold hands and cold feet, which I have in winter all the blooming times. So maybe I need to get some more iodine in my body. It can cause nervousness and obesity because obviously the thyroid making you more imbalanced. But also be aware we don't want to overdose on iodine because too much of it is toxic to our body. This is why it's measured in micrograms because it could be dangerous. So I'm going to tell you where to get your iodine from. As long as you eat a balanced diet, you'll be okay. But don't have so much of these ways to ingest it and take iodine supplements on top because it's toxic. I don't know how much of it is toxic, I'll admit that, but yeah, just letting you know. But iodine is found in places where iron is found as well, but mainly in leafy green vegetables. So spale, spale? Kale, spinach, broccoli, asparagus has a lot of iodine in it as well. Um, and some supplements you can take, like your hair has iodine as well. And you can just buy like pure iodine, which you normally have at schools. Um, and you can take that as well, because it's a perfect antibacterial, much better than coconut oil as well. So yeah. Okay, moving on to one, which we probably all heard of, we get taught this in school, is carbohydrates. Now, we should all know what carbohydrates are. It's things like oats, potatoes, pasta, bread, um, cereals, muesli, beans, lentils. We know our carbohydrates, okay? We got that down. But what are they for? They provide us with energy, they provide us with good fats, and they provide us with fibre. That is what our fats are for, and we all know that. But carbohydrates are said to be a slow releasing of um, these things, or well, slow release of energy, so that's why it's better to have in the morning. Or if you're like a runner, carbohydrates are good as well because you don't need that burst of energy, you need a long lasting energy. So obviously carbohydrates, how much carbohydrates you need is based on what you do, 
what kind of person you are. I'm very petite, um, but then I do do a lot of like long lasting cardio because I enjoy it. So I will probably need like a, if I didn't do the cardio, I wouldn't need so much carbohydrates but because I do do that kind of long lasting um, stamina cardio is that a thing? I don't know. Um, then that I would need more carbohydrates because that if you're a bigger person, if you're taller, if you're wider, if you're fatter, then you will need more carbohydrates to give you more energy. And we know where to get them from because I already said. So moving on to fiber. If you're a vegan, you will have an abundance of fiber. Fiber does not digest, and that's why vegans get the the, the pouch because it stores it, fibre is stored and it helps our intestines get rid of waste which is mainly why it's stored in this area as well um, and yeah I guess it just gets like burned off, used up like petrol um, so it doesn't come out, it just, we use it, we just use it How much fibre do we need? The recommended amount is between 20 and 40 grams a day which in the modern day, in the modern diet, us westerners don't really get that so we need to eat more fiber and you can put it in your cereals you can put it in your salads you can you'll put fiber in literally any sing, any meal at all um and yeah fiber just makes you feel good like when i have a lot of fiber i just feel like i'm like jumping off the walls i love it where can you get fiber from you can get it from whole grain you can get it from beans lentils fruits vegetables nuts seeds seeds is where i get most of my fiber and i literally put seeds in everything, a load of different seeds. Okay, next is zinc. And then, sh 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 zinc. Let me know if you get that. Zinc is needed for um, your, what's it called? Immunity. Your immune system, that's the one. Um, helps fight off colds, fight off diseases, helps to heal wounds, like cuts in your bodies, um, or inside your bodies and it's very good for the heart and your reproductive organs so it can also help with fertility um and kind of regulating hormones and like regulating menstruation and not making that as bad okay how much do we need let me read this bit so four to seven milligrams for children nine milligrams a day for teenagers and seven to nine milligrams a day for adults and where, where can we get this zinc you ask Okay, this is found in whole grains, it's found in nuts, found in tofu, found in leafy greens, found in seeds, found in almonds especially, um, and pumpkin. So, we can get the zincness in this season. I don't know why I'm talking so weird, I don't know what's got into it. I haven't had my vitamins yet today, maybe that's why. So what happens if you don't have enough zinc? Well, you could be sterile. Yep. If you're finding it hard to conceive, up that zinc because you might get a baby. So you could be sterile if you don't have enough zinc. You can be very, very tired and lethargic, but also your wounds could be really, really um, take ages to heal. So they are some indications of if you don't have enough zinc in your body. Okay, so the next one we've got is vitamin A, and that's very good for your eyes, very good for your skin, your gums, um, very good for fight off infections, and is a natural antioxidant. So it basically evens out the electrons in the body um, and too many free electrons um, can cause stress. So antioxidants get stress away, basically. <laughs> um, it's pretty hard to not get enough vitamin A. It's in most foods um, and you don't want to get too much of it anyway. So I wouldn't suggest any vitamin A supplements because it can be toxic to the body, just like the iodine. But again, if you're having a balanced diet, then you're not going to be able to kind of overdose on vitamin A so you won't accidentally like poison yourself or anything unless you're actively trying to poison yourself with vitamin A. So it's unlikely to not have enough vitamin A in your body but sometimes it does happen and the ways you can find this is if you have really sore gums a lot, you have skin problems that just won't seem to be fixed and if you your eyes don't adjust in dark rooms um, and you just can't see anything at night time then that could be a result of lack of vitamin A in your body. And you can get vitamin A in yellow and orange, basically yellow and orange um, fruits and vegetables. So you can get it in peppers, mangoes, carrots, apricot. You can get it in margarine again. You can get some green vegetables like spinach, kale, broccoli, watercress. Um, so yeah, so basically I'd go for the more warmer toned orange and yellow foods, which would have a higher vitamin A count in them. And vitamin A is fat soluble. So as long as you're getting enough um, 
good fatty acids, then your vitamin A will be easily absorbed into your body. Last but not least is vitamin C. Now vitamin C is water soluble. So again, we don't really need to try to have anything else for our body to just absorb vitamin C apart from drinking our water. So vitamin C helps the body to absorb iron. It's good for fighting off infection. It heals wounds and it rebuilds cells as well. So vitamin C is kind of like an all-rounder. Um, and vitamin C is also very good for colds and flus. You should have a lot of oranges um, if you have a cold or congestion or any sinuses, sinus issues. So the recommended amounts for vitamin C, I think are about between 25 and 30 milligrams a day for an adult, oh no, for a child, and 40 milligrams a day for an adult. So it is a possibility that you don't get enough vitamin C in your diet because if, you, if you're storing food that has a lot of vitamin C in it, the vitamin C can easily be destroyed by lots of heat, lots of light. Um, so just keeping it well stored, the food that has vitamin C in it, so you can actually get it rather than it just being destroyed. And try and eat raw foods and like steaming foods um, that have vitamin C in it because otherwise, like if you boil it, then you're just putting all the, the nutrients down the drain um, because all the nutrients come out basically when you boil things. So try and have it raw or steamed. So what is vitamin C found in? Well, I already said it's found in oranges. You can find it in other kind of berries. You can find it in strawberries, mangoes, blackcurrant, um, peas, frozen peas even, broccoli, potatoes, leafy greens, and parsley as well. So that's where you can find vitamin C in. And that is the end of the video. I'm sorry it took a long time for me to get through all that. Um, I was using, like I said, the Liz Cook Charts um, information on this. So that is where I drew the information from. And a lot of the wordings are from Liz Cook Charts. Um, yeah, and that's just an easy way for you to naturally get in your nutrients unprocessed. Um, and obviously it's very vegan friendly as well so you can still get everything in no matter your dietary requirement thank you so much for watching i really hope it helped bye